maybe. Mm -hmm. Mine is a study Bible, so it does. Some of them have summarized it. So this is really short little thing. I usually have extra copies to hand out, but I don't know if I brought them. But this is exactly kind of what I'm teaching. Okay. It tells you what is divine revelation. I mean, this is what Catholics understand. This is how we interpret the Bible. This, and it's just a few pages. It's really quick and easy to read. And the, this is the quote. I'm taking these quotes from this document, just so you know. They're all on your slides. The most important quotes that I've taken from this document. I love this document. It's like one of my favorites. I love to read it. It just helps me to remember, you know, how, to, how do Catholics supposed to interpret the Bible? So these are all quotes from that. Can I see what it looks so like, Caroline? So, yeah, it's, it's, they typed it up really short. You can use the Bible. So these are quotes that I'm taking from it. So what it's saying about the whole is that we don't just read something in the New Testament and say, oh, this is, this is what it means. Well, what did that word mean in the Old Testament? What did the saints say about that word in particular? And how do we interpret that for today? That's the whole meaning of Revelation. Because that's what's been revealed to us. Is that why one from they did they weren't supposed to read the Bible so that the scholars could then no. check them with? I don't know. It was never actually written down that we weren't supposed to. It was taught by priests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is that because they have to go back and double check it, like through the Old Testament? I don't, I don't, I don't, go back to the, you know, I don't, I mean, well, yeah. Right. I don't know how it happened that that came about. Yeah, but if you read change. everything the church has written on the Bible, which is not, it's really just a few documents. Um, Day of Arabim, we have another one. And the church has always said that he, they wanted the faithful to be familiar with the word of God. So I don't know why it is that priests spread this fear of the word of God. Um, it's very strange. But, um, you know, that's been a great fruit of Vatican II, is that people have to back in mm -hmm. to the word of God. Um, that was just because they didn't want us to interpret it a different that's way. That's what they yeah. say. Um, what kind of Bible do they say? That one is New America. I think it, it depends on the publisher. Some publishers print it, some of yeah. them don't. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know why that happened. They say that we love the church, warts, wrinkles, and all. You know? <laughs> that was a wrinkle. <laughs> so these are just some cultural factors continued. Um, I'm not an expert in the Hebrew people, but this is, this is the little that we can grasp. They were a nomadic people. They lived in tents. Mm -hmm. And they lived as families within a tribe. This is in the beginning of the Old Testament. They lived among other cultures, right? You can remember the Egyptians, right? And they integrated their customs. So you can remember whenever so-and-so is marrying, you know, an Egyptian woman, and, you know, the families get all upset about that. Um, the leadership was always through an intermedi intermediary. Okay, awesome. Oh, if you guys want to eat, please. It's lasagna, salad, um, and breadsticks. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. You're free to eat. Um, which is really interesting because if you think about it today, you know, of course we have the Pope, of course we have our priests and everything else, but um, the leadership back then was very different. God specifically chose somebody, and um, the people, you know, if you think about it, if you're in the desert, <laughs> you need to have somebody in charge. And God um, always anointed somebody, blessed somebody to be the leader. And then they all listened to that leader, or didn't listen, you know, in different scenarios. They became a divided kingdom, you know, the 12 tribes. They all got split up, and they began to seek a leader. This is when um, then another division happened, and we were exiled into Egypt through the um, Babylonians. And if you look on here, oh, this one doesn't have it, but, but you can kind of tell. At some point... Well, this kind of just covers the whole thing. The whole story. They were split in the middle of the divided kingdom. They went into exile. They finally came back, and then there was the, whenever the Lord came. After.
after the Maccabean Revolt. So if you notice, up to right here, this is what we're going to cover. That's a lot of turf. The New Testament is relatively short in comparison to the Old. So like I said, this will be a really great overview, I hope, for you guys. But these are just some of the, this is kind of the history in a one slide. They were nomads, they lived among different cultures, they integrated those customs. Um, it should say customs, not whatever, costumes? Costumes. <laughs> costumes. costumes. <laughs> um, there was the leader, like King David, for example, then he became a divided kingdom, and then we got taken into captivity, and then the Lord came. This is the quick story of the Bible. Very quick. So this is what happened over and over again. And honestly, we can't make fun of the Israelites, because we do the same thing. Okay? They're a cycle of sin. Idolatry, putting something above God, mm -hmm. we do that too. Um, after they would um, for be forgetful of God, they would have an idol, whatever that is in their life, whatever it is in our life, and they would become a slave to that idol, which happens to us too. You know, every, whenever we sin, we create an attachment to sin that holds us back into bondage like a rut in a road. Then we repent. We hopefully go to confession, tell that to the priest if it's serious sin. Then we get delivered. God finally shows up. We think he's been absent, but really we walked away from him, right? Then we have a time of rest. Everything is tranquil. And then we put something else on that pedestal besides the Lord. And this is what the Israelites did over and over and over. And this is what we do over and over and over. And a lot of people say, how could they have done that when they had Moses? If Moses is on the mountain, how could they possibly have been having this um, awful party, you know, with the calf? Why would they do that? Well, why do we do that, too? You know, we just can't make fun of them because they're, that's, a, that's a story of God's people, and we are God's people. <laughs> um, sometimes you want to read the Bible, and you want to just be, you know, um, I don't know what the word is, but judgmental, I guess. But we have to look at our own heart and see that we do the exact same things that they have done. And this is the story of our own, our own journey to God. It's not any different than theirs. And I gave you guys a really cool handout that might help you guys visualize. This is one of my absolute favorite things. I had a picture of this in my Old Testament whenever I first started, started studying the Bible. And this is the key to understanding the Old Testament in a special way, the Psalms. So this is how the um, ancient Hebrews thought of the world. They believe in Sheol, the dark place. They believed that there was the sky, right? Then there was a firmament, almost like a barrier. Mm. Above that was the waters. <clears throat> and that's how they understood the rain, that God would open his floodgates, right? So that center part is his floodgates. Whenever the scripture says, open your floodgates, they literally thought it was a flap <laughs> that opened, and God poured water into the inside. Um, that's how they understood that. Um, they believed in the foundations of the earth. This is how they viewed it, that there were these just pillars that went down, and that's what held everything up. So these are just, this is the way that we have to think to, in order to understand, the, especially the Psalms. When you go into the Psalms and you hear them talking about the firmaments or, you know, the pillars of the earth, you're like, what are they talking about? This is literally what they thought, just like we thought the world was flat. You know, this is... This is how they thought, and um, this will help you, I think, to understand in a special way what we will cover today. But it's just good to have as a reference. Oh, and then I got this one from um, the Logos Bible software. That's where I got this picture from. They're a, a, a Bible software company where you can do all of these really cool things on your computer, links to the catechism, and... It's really nerdy, but it's a lot of fun. My dad has it, and he loves it. He used to do it for his morning prayer study times. So it's kind of fun. This is a picture of where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And I wanted to put this up to say, you know, we need to put our sandals on. We really do need to understand what it was like. I've never been to these places where you got to go, right? So cool. Oh, how awesome. Did you go? Last November? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, Maria, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what would you say... Do you think that it helped you to read to understand the Bible? Oh yes, a lot. It's different when you was there. Mm -hmm. 
Like Cecilia? Yeah, <laughs> totally agree. It's when you, uh, well, like when you climb Mount Sinai, you know, you you get the feeling and the majesty and the awe when he's up there and you're down there because you really can't see the distance, you know, uh, mm -hmm. between it. Um, for me, my moment of um, epiphany was in the Church of the Annunciation. I just, um, when you look down into, because they have a round circle and you look down into where the caves of Mary, it, it's just phenomenal. You don't even think about it that way. And the one thing I think that was most interesting because when Maria went on an all Catholic pilgrimage, I just went on a secular one. And you get um, a mind, I had a lot of Jewish people, and they didn't have the respect for the sacredness of the Christianity places. Mm -hmm. And about three days into the tour, it's like, are we going to another church? Well, what does anybody think that the Holy Land is other than where, you know, be, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you was a prophet, I mean, that's what you go to the Holy Land for in each and every place. And, the, and I think it's the, um, when you're saying, because I don't know, did you see the Bedouins, like the ones, that, you know, when you go out, and especially, well, while we went into Egypt, but did you actually see the Bedouins in the desert with the sand swirling around them? And, I mean, it's, like you go back there at Lord's time because you saw them with their camels and they had all their family. <laughs> Still and like they that. had them on the camel. Yeah, you know, you're thinking, here you are going down the highway in this, yeah. you know, 2016 yes, air bus, air bus, 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 yeah. <laughs> and here you got the better oh. ones and the camels going. So yeah, it does really, yeah. Wow. Have you been to the highlands? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, I had a many either. So this is our. This is our task, is to try to get that visual, but it's really challenging. It's really challenging for us. Um, so, um, Catholic Channel, 129 on um, Cyrus, the, uh, the Catholic guy, and uh, well, we don't really, and um, Gus Lloyd are over there right now, can do their um, websites or their, what do you call them? Anyway. They're, they're going to post all the pictures right now of the Holy Land for the next week and a half. Um, like all the social yeah. media and stuff. Yeah, uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook. S. Lloyd and um, uh, Lino Rui. Because they were That's just cool. talking about it today. And, and actually, they're using your, your terminology of getting your sandals on and walking. I mean, it's, it's really hard to do. But really, any book that you go into, you're going to have to do it anyways. Any book that you go into in the Bible, you're going to say, well, what was it during the time of Ruth? You know, what was that like? And, you know, one of the things that I like to do is one of my cheats. This is an awesome book I recommend called Inside the Bible by Kenneth Baker. This is my cheat sheet. Like for Judges, you guys are talking about the book of Judges. It'll tell you where it's at in the Bible, date and author, which is usually speculative, but, you know, gives you an idea. What is the theme? Look, I clearly enjoy this book. And then what is the outline of the book? This is really cool, because you can read this about any book in the Bible, and it kind of just gives you the context. Um, like this says for the book of Judges. The purpose of this book is to show that the good or bad fortune of Israel depended on the obedience or disobedience of the people to God's law, especially the first commandment. So, that's helpful to understand the whole book. Um, this is a Catholic, it's written by a Jesuit, it's a Catholic book, it's very trustworthy, um, and it's real, it's just... Who's the author? Kenneth Baker. This is a great... Um, I haven't seen anything else like it that I really, really love, except for maybe the Catholic... Like I, I have a Catholic source book, and... There's, there's a lot of great reference, resources, but that's my favorite, to understand the Bible. Okay, speaking about Sinai, mm -hmm. I have a video clip for you guys to help us understand. This is a clip from... We watched it last week um, in Patty's class mm -hmm. with the sixth graders. But this is a, a really funny clip explaining Mark Hart, who is, um, also teaches the Bible timeline for children mm -hmm. and for teens. He's explaining what it was like for Moses to go up the mountain. And it's kind of a, a joke, okay? It's not that serious. <laughs>
You know, in Exodus, we talk about Moses going up Mount Sinai. Now, that might not seem like a big deal. He went up the mountain to get the commandments. But you got to remember, he wasn't a teenager when he did this. Moses had a lot of years on him. He was a pretty old dude when he went up the mountain. So today, we're going to take a trip up the mountain to see just how hard it is to climb a mountain, you know, so you can have some prayer time with God. So let's do this. Well, I thought in honor of today, I wouldn't shave, you know, because Moses had a beard and stuff, you know. It's not really fair, though, because I have, like, really great workout gear, good shoes, you know, stuff that breathes, and he had to wear a big, long robe and sandals. You know, you're in the desert. It's kind of hot, you know what I mean? He also had a walking staff, uh, which I don't have. That would be kind of cool, you know. But he didn't He didn't have a smartphone, you know, and that probably would have been helpful. In fact, <laughs> I could probably just download the commandments right now and save myself a lot of time. Well, kind of watch your footing here. I don't know if, I don't know if Moses was quite as athletic as, as I am. <laughs> I'm going to say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel the burn here. <laughs> yeah, that's been... Feel it. He dehydrated himself. The desert air can be kind of... All right, let's do this. We can do this. Hi. Yeah, for delivery? <laughs>